You're listening to the Reds Podcast. This is episode number 51. It's part two of two in our series of nine tips for a strong virtual team. If you're worried about getting burnt by virtual workers, projects not happening, or people running off with your money and missing deadlines, we'll show you how to mitigate that. That's coming up on this episode of the Red Podcast. This is the Red Podcast. Real entrepreneur development. Make more money, work less, and live a life of freedom. No BS advice that really works. Here's your hosts, David Hooper and Laurel Staples. We were out eating dinner last night with some friends, and one of them had heard Red Podcast, and he told Laurel, you sound like you belong on NPR. I took that as a compliment. <laughs> it's always an insult in radio when we say that was more boring than NPR. Those guys are really slick speakers. Oh, they're great. Terry Gross, an unbelievable interviewer, and I got new respect for her when I found out that she never does any of those things face-to-face. It's always through ISDN or some kind of remote connection. She's in a little bitty studio. Who knows where the guest is, but they make her sound great. She does a really good job. And you told our friend it was the compression, that it had nothing to do with me or my talents. Well, you said you had a nice radio voice. He said we both had nice radio voices. Fair enough, fair enough. And that's the compression. That's like the (laughs) Photoshop of models. You clean that up, compress it. Everybody's got a nice radio voice when you compress it. Mm. Well, I think it's just raw talent that we have, (laughs) David. (laughs) I took it as a compliment. That well, I do I, think the Red Podcast is getting better. If you go back and listen to the early episodes, go listen to episode zero when we talked about what is Red Podcast. I think we've gotten better. It was probably a little rough around the edges. Of course. Well, like Terry Gross, a lot of people don't realize this. We are not in the same room. We do this remotely. You do it from your office. I do it from my office. We just put the two recordings together. That's why you want to put together a studio in Got our a house. studio. Build a studio in the house. I'm ready. Got the soundproofing ready to go. We just need to get the equipment in and get an audio engineer over here to hook it up. And that should be coming soon. Hopefully in the next month or two, we'll have that done. That's my wedding present to you. Permission to build a studio <laughs> in the house. Get the drills out. <laughs> we'll never sell this house again. Nope. All right. Let's talk about what red is. Red, Real Entrepreneur Development, that's what it stands for, for bloggers, speakers, authors, anybody with a message. If you've got something that you want to get out there, this is the podcast to listen to. We will help you do it. We're also all about longevity. It's not tips and tricks, ways to hack the system. It's ways to make sure that you can exist a year from now, five years, 10 years from now. Laurel and I have both done that. It's a turbulent world, isn't it, Laurel? Absolutely. And here we we are, still standing. And we talked about last time on episode number 50, this is the part two of that, we talked about tips for building a strong virtual team, and we are going to be doing part two of that today. The first part of this episode is available at redpodcast.com slash 50. Here's the problem. If you're an author, speaker, writer, blogger, podcaster, if you're one of those people that I mentioned, you've got a message and you want to spread it, you run out of time. It can't be just you, but people are worried about getting burnt. They're worried about projects not happening, people running off with money when they bring other people in. A lot of times, authors, bloggers, podcasters, they start out just a one-man operation, and it can be tough when you're in charge to let somebody into your baby. Laura, why don't you summarize what we talked about in the first part of this two-part series, episode number 50. In number 50, David, you gave some really good pointers, number one through four out of nine. First one was communication. Second one was how to avoid plagiarism and copyright issues. Third was avoiding brand new providers, why you should go with people that have already been on the freelance site for a while. And number four was looking for positive feedback. And if you want more details and to go into depth of any of those, just check out the last episode. We've got very specific reasons on why you want to do those things. It'll make sure that you don't get burnt. Make sure that you get the work that you ask for back quickly. Make sure you have an overall good experience. The reason we're talking about this is I've run a virtual business for over 10 years. I've 
done about $150,000 on Elance alone. I was the number two buyer on scriptlance.com for volume before it was taken over by Freelancer. Have had dozens and dozens and dozens of projects on Odesk. We've talked about 99 designs here before. Between us, Laurel and I have done hundreds of projects on these sites. So we know what we're talking about. We've been through it. We've had good, bad, and ugly experiences. And we want you to have some good ones. So let's get to it. Communicate on a very basic level. That would be number five. You have to remember that it is a worldwide marketplace that we are in. And not every provider is going to be from your country. People have different languages. Don't use big, fancy $5 words. Break it down. A lot of these guys, they're very, very good at written English. And they can understand you, but you have to remember that it is not their primary language. It's a second, sometimes a third language. So you have to be very specific. We talked about communication on redpodcast.com slash 50. That was number one. You want to be very specific in what you tell people. I want to reiterate that here on the fifth element and say that you have to communicate at a very, very basic level. And that means no contractions. Instead of you'll, say you will. Very, very basic level, as basic as you can make it. I like to say I've got five things for you to do. One, two, three, four, five. List them out to make sure the entire job gets done. And even better than that, not only am I listing them, I'll give screen capture videos and explain exactly what I want done if it's a project of that nature. What do you do when you run into language barriers? Even if you're communicating on a very basic level, do you change providers? What do you do? Well, you can. What I've found, though, is most of these guys, they are in the freelancing business. They are used to working with people that speak English. Most of them are pretty good. I'm also a very good communicator just from the dozens and dozens, even hundreds and hundreds of projects that I've done. So I don't run into that problem too often. We vet the people, which is what we've explained on the previous episode. But if you find somebody that's just not working, you're not able to communicate them. And that's freelance or anybody. It could be your girlfriend. It could be a family member, anybody. Sometimes you got to let those guys go. Let's talk also about, you mentioned this on the last episode, is sometimes it's okay to get people in other countries that don't speak your language to maybe help you with graphic design. But other times, maybe if you're hiring a virtual assistant or someone to write something for you, you'd want someone in your native language, in your actual country. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. If you're having any written communication done, you want somebody that is in your country That is because, for one, the language, but also culture. Cultures are different. We experience different things in a different way. What we consider entertaining for somebody in the United States, for example, it's going to be considered something different for another culture. So you want to have something that is culturally a match for you and for the audience that you're marketing to. Now, something like graphic design, well, if they don't have to talk, if you're just giving them the text or the copy to lay out, Words are not that important. They can do that. But if you're talking about getting on the phone and doing cold calls for you or answering your phone, you want somebody that can speak English, obviously. So there are different types of jobs that you're going to be hiring for. And some people, you need them to speak better English. Some people, you don't need them to speak at all. It's funny. I just wrote about this on my blog earlier. If you are a customer service rep, In the United States, if you're a checkout person, if you're dealing with the public, you want somebody at that job that is good at dealing with the public. Now, if you're just a clerk in the stock room and you're stocking things and all you have to do is put cans of beans on the shelf so you don't have to have interaction with people, well, you don't need to really speak or even like speaking to people, even if you do know the language. So it's just looking at what it is that you need from a worker and making sure they have this skill set. Just like I wouldn't do a graphic design job, Laurel, because I don't know Photoshop. It's no different than that. Let's move on to number six. Number six, use escrow. Let me explain what that is. Escrow is where you put the money down. It is held by a third party. And when the work is done, that money is released. It is safe. If the work isn't done, you get your money back. If the work is done, the provider can feel safe that he or she will get his money. Instead of paying somebody directly where they can run off with money, instead of putting a down payment down like a lot of people, if I haven't worked with a provider before, I put 100% 
of the money. If it's a $1,000 job, let's say $1,000 goes in escrow. That way the provider's safe. That way I'm safe. They do all of the work, 100% of the work, not 90%, not 95%, 100% of the work. Then they get 100% of the money. I talked earlier on redpodcast.com slash 50, the first part of this two-part series on building a strong virtual team, about an experience I had with a writer. She had stolen content. It happened to be from a Jack Canfield book, the guy who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, tried to pass it off as her own. We had that money in escrow, and unfortunately, it slipped through the cracks. Sometimes you still get burnt using escrow. If we had caught that ahead of time, if we had done our due diligence, she would have never gotten that money and walked away with it. And we would have been safe and been able to get our money, get the project done and not have to take that hit. Now, are those escrow accounts set up through places like Elance or do you have to set up a separate account? Either one. Elance does provide escrow service and they will hold on to the money for you until the work is done. But there are also third party escrow services that you can use. Usually I go through the site that I'm using. So like Elance, I just like to keep it all in one place. What about if you hire someone like a virtual assistant, a VA, do you just pay them per hour or do you set up anything like this? I've paid people by the hour. I've also paid people on a flat rate. My philosophy in general is I don't care how long you work on it. I just need the job done. And it's worth saying when I hire virtual workers, I like to just do a flat rate. Let's say the job is $100. Here's $100. Do the job. Get the work to me. I don't care if it takes you 10 minutes. I don't care if it takes you 10 hours. Just give me the work. Here's your $100. Now, you can hire people by the hour. Odesk is really great about this. Odesk has a system where it will take screenshots. I want to say it's every maybe 30 seconds or three minutes. You can actually watch the people work. I know people have set up these kind of nanny cams where they'll watch their workers work. You can do that and hire people by the hour. I prefer just to get the work done. I don't want to micromanage people. I let them play to their strengths. I let them get their work done. Part of the outsourcing isn't for me to have another job. The outsourcing is done to free up my time and I just want the work done. You can hire people by the hour. You can hire people on a flat rate either way. Do you find that if people are hired by the hour that they're going to stretch out what they do or do you find that most people are pretty honest on those sites? You know, it's hard to say. I know that there are employees I've run into them. I probably was one of those employees when I was working an hourly job that love to stretch things out and get paid more. I think you're going to have that anywhere. That's one of the reasons that I like to pay a flat rate for something that I have done. I think most people are honest. These are professionals. You have to realize that. There are a lot of people. They don't have a lot of opportunities in their country. They're going to virtual assistants. They're going to things of this nature where they can work online and work for people in more let's call them more wealthy countries, such as the United States, where they can make money that way. And this is their livelihood. They're not going to jeopardize that. I've found these guys have great work ethics. And when you're paying somebody, let's say $5 an hour, not much by United States standards. When you're paying somebody that, well, who cares if they take an extra hour? It doesn't really matter as far as your bottom line goes. That was what I got paid when I was 15. You know what? I got paid when I was 15, 335. That was the minimum wow. wage. Yeah. And then she bumped me up and acted like she was doing me a favor when she gave me 350. Wow. Yeah. I had a tight ass boss. Yeah. Rolling in the dough there. Rolling in the dough. Scooping ice cream at Baskin Robbins. That was my first real gig. Did you have a little hat? I did. It looked like a clown uniform. It was all. Was it pink? Pink. It was orange and it was brown. <laughs> Uh, that was in what decade? <laughs> that was in the 80s. The 80s. Yeah, I was a freshman in high school, and that was my first. I had my own jobs. I had entrepreneurial endeavors before that. Worked at a gun show, had my little gun show business, carting around carts of guns and ammunition. I was moving brico blocks. I was selling stuff, buy low, sell high. And I've written about these, actually, if you're interested, at BigBoldImpact.com. But yeah, that was my first like real retail kind of restaurant business. Hmm. Well, let's move on here. We got number five is communicate on a basic level. And number six is use escrow. What's number seven? Laurel, number seven is treat providers well. This is something that I take very, very personally. I feel that I'm a representative of our country, the United States, 
when I'm hiring people that are not from the United States, we release a lot of media. There's a lot of news, a lot of propaganda about the United States. Some of it's true, some of it's not, but it's important for me that these folks have great experiences when they're working with me. You've been overseas, right? Absolutely. And there's always that stereotypical American in every group. He's loud. He's fat. He wants to pay with American currency, even though he's nowhere near the United States. Not every American is like that. But when I see somebody like that, it just makes me cringe. I want to be that guy that is going to be a great example of this country. What I've found is that brand new business owners, because you have a lot of people that will work for $3 an hour, because you've got a lot of people that will work for $5 an hour, it is possible to get a great person working for $5 an hour that has a master's in business, an MBA. That's the kind of race that we're talking about to go for overseas workers. And because of that, sometimes people treat them in what I feel is, is not a great manner. So I think if you can treat your providers well, respect them better than the next guy, they'll be more loyal to you. You'll have a better reputation. Providers will talk to each other. If you go to a site like Elance, they've got a message board just for providers. And the good providers, word gets out, bad providers, word gets out. You'll get a reputation. And being a better provider actually gets you better rates when you pay on time, when you pay well, when you're easy to work with. This is one of the reasons that I always like to give feedback. A lot of people just, they are kind of a work and run. They'll get the work done and they'll run. You'll never hear from them again. And I'm talking about the people that hire, not necessarily the providers that are giving you that service. So if you can have a relationship, an ongoing relationship, I've actually, I think I mentioned it in the last episode, redpodcast.com slash 50. I've got a great letter that I posted. and We'll link it to the episode notes on this episode, redpodcast.com slash 51. If you want to see it from a worker that I was paying about $3 an hour to, she was just doing simple data entry to me and wrote me a nice letter after working with her full time for about a year about how that money had actually changed the life that she lived and the lives of her family because she had been laid off. And that's why she was working online. I'm just envisioning you as an ambassador of the United States with your little Baskin Robbins, pink and brown apron and your little hat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like a big, big Mac and a big gulp. There you go. And a monster truck. <laughs> All things America. Let's run through the next two. Next two. Keep your ratio up. This is really important. If you are on Elance, they will let providers know how many of the jobs you have placed that you've actually hired somebody for. For example, an 80% ratio, you would have posted, let's say, five jobs, but hired people on four. And the higher your ratio of actually posting a job than hiring people, the better jobs you're going to get, the better rates that you're going to get, because people will actually try to get those jobs from you. If you've got somebody that's buying on there and they only pick 10% of the projects that they post, sometimes people won't mess with it because they know the chances of you hiring them are slim. So I try to keep my ratio up of every 10 projects that I want to hire nine people on them. I don't go there just because I, I want to fill things out. I go there when I'm ready to buy. All right. So number eight, keep your ratio up on these sites like Elance and Freelancer. What's number nine? Number nine is that you have to trust people. And this is more philosophical than anything. There's no way around it. 99% of people are great. I had an experience here recently with our WordPress blog where we had a tech issue and somebody asked, hey, could you give me administrative access? Just did it through email, set up a password, and I did it. Everything worked out great. The problem was solved in five minutes, much more quickly than it would have been otherwise. Sometimes you just have to roll the dice like that. Yeah, you can get burned on that, but don't get so caught up in not letting anybody into your business or not trusting people that no work ever gets done. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like to micromanage people. So give people trust. Allow them to do their job, and they will amaze you. These people are very good. They're professionals. 99% of the time, you're going to have a great experience. The only reason I can talk about bad experiences is because I've done hundreds and hundreds of projects. 
Plus, if you're a control freak like me, you have to realize that other people might not do it exactly the way you're going to do it, but you can trust them to get it maybe 80% of the way or 85% of the way, and you only have to do the 20%. So even if you're a control freak, kind of just trusting other people that they're going to get it closer to where you need it. Maybe it won't be perfect in your mind, but it'll help you greatly along the way. Yeah, there are multiple ways to do something, and a lot of times these guys will actually even have better ideas if you listen to them because they're working with so many people that are hiring them. They'll come to you sometimes with ideas like, hey, I think I could promote your site this way. What do you think about it? Well, okay, great. Try it. David, you had such great tips today. I want to give tip number 10, and this is just something that's really worked for me in hiring people, is to get recommendations. This has been really great because when I need someone for a specific job, I ask my peers, I ask my colleagues, who do you know that could do this for me? Who do you know that has this skill? Who do you know that I could hire? And Elance and Freelancer, they have tools where you can read people's reviews and find people and post jobs. But for me, it's just helpful to go to my people and ask them, who would you recommend? And that helps me find the right person for what I want to do. And then if I can't do that, that's when I might go on Odesk or Freelancer or something like that. So don't be afraid to ask the people that you know to recommend somebody to help you on your virtual team. Or point you in the right direction on those sites. Certainly, I know a lot of people on Elance, Odesk, you do as well. Laurel, we've had great experience at 99designs, and we can point people in the right direction if they ask us. Absolutely. So let me sum up from today. We did five out of the nine tips today on episode 51. Number five was communicate on a basic level because everyone has different languages around the world. Number six, use escrow. Number seven, treat providers well. Number eight, keep your ratio up. Number nine, trust people. And number 10, get recommendations. That's our bonus tip. If you've got questions about what we talked about today, Laurel and I are both available. And the best way to get us is via the Red Podcast website. That is Red Podcast. Dot com. There you will find a contact form to get us via email. Although the best and quickest way is probably via Twitter. And you can do that all from redpodcast.com. We're also open to episode suggestions. So if there's a topic that you want us to cover, send it on. We'll take that into consideration. We appreciate you and would appreciate if you'll tell a friend about Red Podcast if you liked us and if you're a subscriber on iTunes, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. That will help us to come up more often in iTunes search. More people will find out about us, and we will continue to build the real entrepreneur community. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time on the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com. 